I was surprised at how easy it is to set up Uno CSS with Quasar, especially now that they've actually got a Webpack plugin. So I did a previous video that shows you how to set up Uno CSS using Quasar with Vite. However, at the moment, you lose a lot of Quasar functionality when you use the Vite plugin. So until Quasar is using Vite as its sort of foundational build tool, um, we're going to have to use Webpack, which isn't that big a deal. Sure, it's a little bit slower, but it's not that much slower. So anyway, now that, uh, now that Uno CSS supports Webpack, this is a whole lot easier. So I'm going to come in here. I've got a fresh Quasar project, and we're going to go into our quasar.conf file. All right, and now we're going to open up a console here, and we're going to install Uno CSS for Webpack. And we can do that by saying yarn add dash D, and that will be at Uno CSS slash Webpack. So let's go ahead and get that installed. While that's installing, let's look at the next step, which is going to be say hey, to say, hey, I want you to get Uno CSS out of at Uno CSS slash Webpack. And then we want to pull dot default out of there. All right, so that's the Uno CSS plugin for Webpack. How do we actually use it? Well, if we search for the word build in this file, notice that we've got this build object, and that's where we can start doing Webpacky type stuff. I'll show you what I mean. We can say extend Webpack, and that's going to accept the Webpack config. And now I can come in here and say config.plugins.push. We want to add a new plugin, and it's going to be Uno CSS. And then inside of there, we can put all of our settings. So I'm going to have that empty by default. And I'm pretty sure that's it. The last thing we need to do is actually use the CSS that Uno CSS provides for us. And here's what I think is probably the best way to do that. I'll say Quasar new boot, and we'll call this Uno CSS. So we're creating a boot file. And then I'm going to find our boot section in our config, here it is here. And we want to use the Uno CSS boot file. Now, if I say Control KB to open up my file explorer, under boot, we can see we've got this Uno CSS boot file, and that line of code means that we're actually using it. So let's come in there. We can actually delete all of this. We don't need any of this boot related logic. All we want to do is say import Uno. CSS, simple as that. That's just going to make sure that we actually have the CSS from Uno CSS available to us. Okay, sweet. Next, we're going to say Quasar Dev to check that everything runs okay. And now, once this is running, it's actually not going to do anything yet. I'm just checking for errors right now, but we haven't actually told Uno CSS to do anything. So, for example, let's just close out of this. We'll jump into our index.view file here. If I were to wrap that in a card, and I might just do this manually without using any hotkeys so I don't confuse anyone. So let's wrap that in a card, and then here we'll say class is equal to padding or, and let's say maybe five. Save that, and notice that I don't have any padding here. So we need a preset as well to actually start using. So let's jump back into quasar.conf.js. And at the top of this file, we're going to pull in an Uno CSS preset. Actually, first, we need to actually install it. So control backslash, so I get this other terminal open. And I'm going to say yarn add dash capital D. And it's called at Uno CSS slash preset dash Uno. That's the official Uno CSS preset. So let's go ahead and pull that in. And this is a really cool preset. It basically lets you do whatever you want with your utility classes. And a lot of the time it'll just work. It's kind of cool. So now we can come in here and say const uno, what, what, we'll call it preset uno. I'm pretty sure that's what they call it in the docs. And then we can just say here require at uno css preset dash uno dot default. So we're going to pull that out. And now let's actually go ahead and use this preset. Coming down to that Webpack section, we'll come in here and we'll say Presets. And by the way, there's actually a way to have a Uno CSS 
uh, file that handles all of your config. So if this starts to get a little bit bloated, you can create a Uno CSS file. Just check that in the docs. I can't actually remember um, how to do that. So you can go ahead and check out the Uno CSS GitHub repo to see how that's done. So we're going to say presets and we want preset Uno. So let's go ahead and save that. Give this a while to recompile. And I think that might actually be it. And there we go. Now, one problem I've noted, and please uh, leave a comment if you know the answer to this, is that if I change this now, for example, to a 10, it seems to remove all the CSS and I have to refresh the page in order to get that to actually update. So it's kind of annoying, but I'm guessing it's one of those little problems that, you know, maybe I've done something slightly wrong in the setup or something that one of you watching the video can uh, let me know what I need to do to fix that up. And that's it. We've now got Uno CSS working with Quasar. And it's that simple. It might even be worth creating an app extension that does a lot of this behind the scenes because you could easily create a Uno CSS app extension uh, that handles the boot file, uh, adds all of the Quasar configs. So I might actually go ahead and do that once I figure out how to get this sort of hot reloading problem fixed up. And so there you go. That's Uno CSS with Quasar. Thanks for watching and I'll see you in the next video.